Welcome back to season three of What, Why, God. As we talk about the testimonies of people of faith and the timeless truth of God. And today I have with me Kyle Strickland. He is our senior associate minister. And we were discussing, I told him I'd wanted to have him on for the last few seasons. And he's just been so busy. <laughs> So we, we talked about it, and uh, he has had um, a testimony on how God has used him in his profession. And he made it, God had made it very clear that he in, intended to use him. Uh, and lots of us have a plan for our life. Uh, Kyle, you got your degree in history, is that correct? I did. So <clears throat> actually a couple of degrees. I, my undergraduate degrees in Bible and religion. Okay. But all my grad work is in history. That doesn't make me a history buff at all. Um, in fact, I, I could probably even say I'm not necessarily a fan of that field of study. What a degree in history teaches you, though, is it teaches you how to research. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. opted for that after my undergraduate degree because I, I wanted to be in ministry, but I, I felt the strength of a, of a history grad work in history would have aided that uh, my teaching capacity and my teaching ability because I just I knew how to find stuff yeah. and it was um, yeah. it was quite interesting. And yeah. so you started as a minister and but you had this kind of pull to do some teaching and and somehow wound it up wound up with an opportunity to teach at the college level but you mentioned to me that it concerned you to teach at the college level being a minister why why was that? Well yeah I I, I was very I pursued teaching on the collegiate level. That was a pursuit of mine. That was partially another reason why I did grad work in history. I, I wanted to teach on the collegiate level. I knew, though, that doing so would cause some friction. It's in the public university sphere. I didn't teach in a private university. I taught in a public school, public university. I knew that there would be some friction with people of faith mm -hmm. teaching in any degree field or, or any field of study. So I, I wasn't cautious. I won't, I won't say that I was cautious, but I was hyper aware of my place in the classroom, in the field of study, in, in the education world, uh, as well as the opportunity I was given. And, and, I, and, I, and I began every semester, I taught, just to let you know, I taught undergraduate history classes, world civilization classes, and American history classes, and government classes. But I began the first day of every semester, which if you've been to college, you know that's syllabus day. It was yeah, always a day yeah. of a syllabus. Here's what a, a we're gonna syllabus. do. Yeah. What we're gonna do, here's who we are. Uh, I, would, I would always begin those days by letting the, the, the students know what I did in my real job because it was yeah. an adjunct yeah. it was an adjunct role I was I, I was a senior level adjunct professor but I, I was clear that I was a, I was a pastor I was a minister here are my office hours here's the church where I work here's how you can contact me so it was never a secret what I did outside of the classroom so right. I knew saying those things would cause um, it could cause some some good some goodwill but I had some instances where there was some ill will toward me just simply because I mentioned that I was, uh, I was a minister, that I, that I, yeah. that I followed Jesus. So yeah. there, was some, there was some points of conflict. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's understandable these days. I mean, uh, it, it just is what it is. So, but interestingly, though, you thought all was good until the vice president of the school called you in. So tell us about that. That must have been a little nerve-wracking. Right, so I, 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 by the time... I had, by the time of this situation, I had taught you know, six or seven years in this um, in, in this university. Um, I had, I was I was known. I, I was a I was a known person. I, I, my classes filled up rather quickly. Uh, I had lots of people interacting with me because I was a, a minister. I I was able to provide counseling opportunities, not personally but was able to, share, to, share, to share things. this is how you can get some help with some people. Um, I had a, a, one young lady interrupt my class in the, uh, just one particular day. She walked in, she was late, she was uh, in tears. Her husband uh, was an addict and he had 
uh, lost his sobriety the night before and it endangered her and her children. So we interrupted class to, to, to talk to her because yeah. of the obvious Needed reasons. Needed to be addressed, yeah. So I had, a, I had a lot of situations like that. I had some situations where students would uh, push back on anything I said. I, I made um, sort of a couple of decisions, and I don't, I don't want to say that, I don't want to necessarily take credit for those. I, I had a, a moment where I wondered what I was doing in that, in that situation in, in teaching, and I, I wondered that for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the money was good. I was, I, it was really a, a bivocational experience. I was a, a minister, but I was also a college teacher yeah. in the same place. I was known in, in two separate fields. Um, the money was good. I appreciated that. I didn't want to lose that income, but it was, uh, it was, it was, it was hard. Yeah. There, was, there was a lot of prep to teach regularly and to try to maintain people's attention at eight o'clock in the morning for a history class. <laughs> exactly. no, nobody wants to take yeah. an eight o'clock <laughs> World Civ class. I knew the mountain that I had to climb every single morning. So I was spending a lot of my extra time preparing, yeah. even though I'd had uh, a degree in this, all my grad work was in it. It was still, you had to talk for an hour and a half twice a week on things that I didn't necessarily enjoy, but I, but I had to teach one. And I, and I, got, I, 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 I got to be a pretty good teacher. I, I was nationally recognized in, in, in teaching by, in my time there. So all these things kind of worked together and it was a grind. It was a daily grind. I was teaching five days a week, varying various classes, sometimes at night. All of that to say it, it became difficult and I was not quite sure if this was the correct path, if I needed to even stay on this path. My options were limited, but I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't necessarily convinced. And there, there was quite a bit, there was still quite a bit of friction because mm -hmm. I was a believer. So yeah, yeah. I was, I spent a lot of time in prayer asking the Lord if I was supposed to stay in this field. I, I mean, I was in the, the public sphere, I was in uh, what you know maybe church insider language would call the marketplace. I was yeah, I was yeah. actively as a minister working in the marketplace, which kept my teaching from being hypothetical. I could tell people to share their faith in their career choices without any backlash because I was teaching in a public space that could, and if I shared my faith, could jeopardize my employment. So when I taught those things in a church setting. I was doing it in real time. It wasn't a hypothetical situation. I, and and I, I, I knew all of those things, but it, it, had, it had reached a point and, uh, and I was starting to be cautiously concerned of my future when I was checking out one semester. The checkout procedure is rather, um, it's rather complex. You have to check out with grades and, and exams and research papers and all of your paperwork and you have to complete all these boxes, all that to get your final check for the semester. So you do it right. I was, in, I was checking out the vice president immediately wanted to talk to me and uh, in an, even in an adjunct role, uh, your, your job is tenuous. It's, not, it's based on enrollment for one thing, but, yeah. but you all are also seen as an expendable employee. There are a lot of people that could possibly teach in the classroom where you are. So for her to call me in her office was an abnormal, unusual experience. I worked a with the dean. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I worked with yeah. the dean. <laughs> I worked with the supervisor of our department. I never worked with the vice president. So uh, I obliged. Uh, I walked into her office and was it, it, it was uh, it was a little nerve wracking. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. a little nerve wracking. Yeah. I'm not yeah. I'm not gonna uh, understand be dishonest. Yeah. I just had no context. This was not something that happened ever in a public university setting. So anyway, I sat down in her uh, in her guest chair, and um, the banter was friendly, um, which it seemingly all, often is before the hammer falls. I mean, she's <laughs> yeah, like, she's yeah, warming anyway, me up a little so bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then she asked this uh, interesting question. She said, what, 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 what is your real job? What do you do when you're not here? Uh, on campus. And that must have taken you back a step or two. It did because I didn't know if it was any of her business. Yeah. I mean, I'm in a public university yeah. setting. I don't, it's really not her business mm -hmm. legally what I do in my free time or outside of my employment. But I obliged. I mean, I was a figure in this, where I lived. People knew who I was. It wasn't a secret. So, you know, I said, well, I'm, 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 a, I'm a pastor. I'm, I'm a minister. And I, 
But I, I immediately followed up with, why are you asking me this question? I don't, I don't understand why, why this matters. And she, uh, she kind of looked at me, a very intelligent woman, um, very astute, uh, a very good reader of people and personalities. And she uh, immediately responded with this answer to this question. She said, well, of all of our adjunct instructors and professors, you are the only one no one complains about. And I, I, I didn't quite know what to think about that comment. I mean, the first thing I thought uh, was that she has a file somewhere of all the complaints. <laughs> yeah. of, that you're are, like, well, good for me. Yeah, that are <laughs> logged yeah. against her instructors, and she's kind of keeping this somewhere. So I thought, well, at least I'm, I'm not on that file. Um, Woohoo! That, that, that made me feel good. Yeah. Um, and, and I said, well, I, I didn't know how to respond, so all I said was, uh, be well, let me wait. Before I responded, I immediately thought, maybe rather pejoratively, that I must not be doing anything right either if no one's complaining. So I, I, I didn't quite know what to sense. So I said, well, uh, um, I, I guess that's okay. Like, I, that's what I asked her. She says, it's absolutely okay. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. very appreciative of you being on our staff and on our campus and in the lives of our students. And it was... Um, it was quite remarkable. I realized in that moment, I left her office and, 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 and I don't remember what I did the rest of the day, but I do remember thinking that I had received an answer from the Lord to the question that I had asked if I was supposed to continue. Yeah. And the answer yeah. was, uh, you stay there. You're there to share the gospel. That's why you're there. And I'm going to protect you while you're there. Now, yeah. that's not to say that in your specific circumstance, you, you might feel the heat. I'm not gonna say I didn't, and I'm not gonna say my experience is a universal experience, but for me in, that, in my personal sphere, I felt the Lord protecting me and, and it empowering me for the rest of the time that I was there to continue what I was doing, to, to be aggressive and bold in my presentation of the gospel, to share it in the context of historical events. Um, and, and, I, and I felt, I felt very much uh, in the Lord's in the Lord's favor in in that season. That's awesome. And yet now you're here in Houston. Are, are you still able to teach in any adjunct role? Interestingly, um, I, I resigned that position when we moved. Uh, I walked away from it. I I enjoyed. Let me be very clear. I enjoy enjoy and enjoyed teaching. I, I really feel like I was able to cut my teeth there in diverse classrooms, intergenerational classrooms, uh, tons of dynamic conversations. All of those things happen there that don't always happen in a church setting that yeah, yeah. really formed my ability to communicate, my ability to teach. I, I appreciated every, and I still consider myself first and foremost a teacher. I appreciated all those things. It, uh, I, was, I was happy to leave that place. Um, I missed knowing I would miss the teaching, but also knew that season was over. Mm. Um, so we moved here to Houston, and, and, and the Lord has been gracious and kind to us here. We, we love it here. Um, but the dean of my department there contacted me in 2018 and said, would you mind coming back? And, and I explained to him, I don't, I, don't, I live 12 yeah. hours away from <laughs> yeah, you now. How am I, I going to do that? But he, was, uh, he offered me a position to teach. <laughs> some online classes, which um, we're now two years before the pandemic. So online classes were a luxury and I, I agreed to do so. So for the next two to three years, uh, I taught online classes and I won't overstate my position um, during the pandemic and during the lockdown at this particular university, all the, like, a lot, well, maybe all of the college campuses, they closed and all classes that were in person gravitated to online classes. But I felt like I was in a you position already knew to be, what you were doing. I was in a position yeah. to be helpful yeah. uh, to those that uh, all of a sudden had not ever done, done anything mm -hmm. like this to, to shepherd them and to, to offer some, some nuanced information. I was not uh, necessarily uh, the one helping them, but I did 
the, the, in the, the, the beginning of the following semester at the beginning of the 2020-2021 uh, school year was on a committee um, to talk about how to teach online at this particular university. So the Lord's favor in that space continued um, and, and I, I was very grateful to do so. And, and I taught until a couple of years ago. Yeah, and, and I, I just love how God, how he really weaved that whole thing together. Oh, yeah. I mean, we talk about, you know, even with having our online campus starting in 2019 here at the church, and we were fully ready. Uh, we had a lot of things mm -hmm. already in place and it just kind of worked out. And, and you see yeah. that, how, how God puts all those little pieces in place for you able oh, to, to serve him in such a great way. And I, I love that. And so if you're wondering how God can use you and why he's got you in something that makes you feel uncomfortable in your profession or your job, and if you're wondering if it even matters what you're doing, and, and obviously you were having some of those kinds of questions. Is this, is this really, God, I don't understand because this is a public university. And so what scriptures or advice or prayer might you share with somebody who kind of went through this similar kind of like, okay, God, I'm, 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 I'm navigating this. What, what, what would you share with them in your navigation? Uh, for me, it was a, it was a hold on mentality. Uh, I was never given the full scope of my life. <laughs> yeah. um, Who I, is? <laughs> I, I wasn't, even in career choices. This, it was a joy and a delight to teach there. I did appreciate the income. It was uh, beneficial to my family. I, I knew that I, walking away from that would not, it wouldn't be financially good for us. Mm. We're just gonna be honest. But I also, I also knew that there were these glimpses of the Lord's interaction yeah. in those moments yeah. in teaching and in working with students and being able to um, counsel them. Mentor is too strong of a word. The relationship between a, 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 an instructor, a professor, and their student is, is almost very business-like sometimes. They were there to get a, get a grade, and I was there to make sure they got that grade. But what I noticed in... in in the moment, I was there to do a job. I did a job, but being able to be a person of grace and compassion mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. was, I think, the biggest way that I could actually tangibly share the gospel yeah. to students. Yeah. So I would say, hold on, uh, look for those ways that the Lord can use you in personal interactions. Every person matters. Yeah. Every person matters. The person yep. with whom you interact in your office or a client or a student, if you're a teacher, they matter to the Lord. They're, they're alive and they were born on purpose. And therefore they matter to me. They should matter to us. And so that was how I uh, saw my, uh, my position in a public university space of being able to share the gospel in a very personal way. And often I would, I would have students ask uh, about my faith after classes. They would want to know. Uh, what I did and what I believed, and those were uh, invaluable conversations. I pray for those people still today. I don't know who they are. I don't remember their names now. That I taught there almost 20 years. But I did value, even in the moments of doubt and questioning, God bringing these divine appointments into yeah. my life. Yeah. And I saw, saw the Lord work. So I would say, hold on, stay in prayer. It's okay to ask the Lord if you're supposed to be there. That's, those are valid questions. The Lord, Jesus said it in the garden. Is this what you want me to do, God? Is this, is yeah. this the plan for my life? Yep. There's nothing wrong with being bold in those questions. Ask the Lord, is this, is this the plan? And, and the Lord will surprise you. And sometimes the, and for me, it was yes. For Jesus, it was, it was yes. This is, this is what I want you to do for now. Sometimes those plans change and it's okay for that to happen too. But in your situation, I would say, hold on, stay in prayer, be looking for moments where you can be a giver a giver of grace. Yeah, that's that's really good. Yeah, remember that God always has uh, something that he can use, and sometimes it's something silly that you might think well, it was that that made a difference, and and uh, you just never know how God can take uh, a Christian, somebody in their workplace, to bless another person and to lead them closer to him. So thank you so much for sharing that. I just love sure. that. I love thank how you. God just weaves some beauty into your life and, and gave you income in the, in the same time. So. Okay. He provides at all times, everyone, so don't, don't forget that. So thank you so much for joining us today. I hope this encouraged you and that you can see that God works in some very mysterious ways, 
and uh, his will will be done no matter what. So thanks so much for being with us today. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you know somebody who really needs to see this lesson or hear this story, please make sure you let them know. We'll talk to you later.